what's happening here in Greece is what's happening everywhere. We have um, a deepening techno-feudal oligarchy, which is relying extensively on ensuring that parliamentarians, as well as the public, are kept in the dark about how power manifests itself in our countries, in our regions, in our continents, globally. Um, you will recall that, I believe it was Michael Pompeo, if I'm not so mistaken, who uh, described Julian Assange and WikiLeaks in a bid to explain why Julian and WikiLeaks must be eradicated. He described Julian and WikiLeaks as a hostile, non-state intelligence agency, which is exactly right. This is precisely what WikiLeaks is. But, you know, it's what the Guardian should be. It's, it's what the Le Monde should be. It should be what every self-regarding news outlet ought to be, a hostile, non-state intelligence agency that reveals to the many that which is happening behind closed doors, supposedly in their name, against them. Um, Julian is very rightly hated by the establishment because he revealed power's guilty secrets. And, um, you know, um, we must never skew that. We must celebrate that. He is a real nightmare, public enemy number one for <laughs> the establishment, for the oligarchy. Uh, and he is that because he has managed in his life to combine two remarkable um, achievements. One is he's a fantastic theoretician, theorist of the way power spreads through opacity, through the opposite of transparency. Uh, even before he started WikiLeaks, he was um, um, theorizing and writing very beautiful texts on how to turn the tables on Big Brother. Effectively, how to use, to create a technological digital mirror that we turn towards the face of Big Brother so that while Big Brother is watching us, we are watching him. And this is exactly what WikiLeaks is. So that was the theory before WikiLeaks. And then, of course, we had the, the practice. Uh, and, you know, the other reason why they hate him so much is because he's a brilliant technologist. You know, some, Julian could have been the CEO of Google. He could have been a multi-billionaire given his skills. But he has chosen, you know, to be in Belmar's prison, to be persecuted and hounded on behalf of, you know, humanity that needs to have access to the information that is denied by an oligarchy, uh, absolutely hell-bent on maximizing its power over the many by withholding this information. Uh, allow me, just before I finish, because I don't want to analyze the, 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 uh, the discussion. Um, look, I've watched Julian work at close quarters. Uh, I've, you know, in one of my many, many visits at the Ecuadorian embassy, I remember he, he texted me sometime uh, and in the middle of the night and said, look, you need to come over. So I got in an airplane from Athens, I flew to London, and got a taxi, I ran to, as quickly as I could to the Ecuadorian embassy. And he had um, a recording that he wanted to share with me. It was a conversation between the head of the European desk of the International Monetary Fund and other members of the International Monetary Fund, in which what they were saying was just absolutely... Um, absolute confirmation of everything that the Greek people have been suffering under the IMF program since 2010. Uh, all the things that we were saying as radicals, progressives, uh, opponents of the IMF, they were admitting to one another. And he had this, um, uh, this recording and he asked me to help him uh, deciphering what they were saying because a lot of that, a lot of the terminology is apocryphal. Uh, but I watched Julian working as a, a dedicated journalist. You know, we were mates, we were comrades, we were friends, we were working together. He never revealed to me where that information came from, where that recording came from. And you know what? He would not have revealed it, even if his life depended on it, because he preserved his sources. He was meticulous in the way he ensured that what Wikileaks published was accurate. He had the ideal journalist mentality. So um, this is why he's hated, because he's what journalism should be. He's what an active democratic citizen should be. He's genuinely 
the living, breathing nightmare of the oligarchy. And that's why they are trying to kill him in uh, Britain's Guantanamo. Now, to finish off, we must stop defending Julian. We must go on the attack. We must attack those who are killing him. Enough of defending Julian. Julian doesn't need defending anymore. We need to go on the attack because there is a crime perpetrated against all of us, parliamentarians and non-parliamentarians, when they are trying to kill the body and the soul of Julian Assange in order to stop democracy from having a chance. We don't have democracy, but to stop democracy from even having a chance. And whenever journalists, whether it's the BBC or CNN or, you know, um, Tevez Senk in France, wherever, whenever they start, they ask us about human right violations here, there and everywhere, wherever, you know, the West seems to be interested in human rights. We must respond by saying, what about Julian Assange's human rights? What about the human rights of all those people that were helped by Julian Assange and now Julian Assange, because he helped them, is being killed off on a daily basis. Whenever they say to us, oh, but you know, Julian Assange did this and did that, we must respond by saying to them, this is the type of question one asks if one is not interested in the survival of free journalism. We must attack the framework that the BBC, The Guardian, and so on are using in order to justify and to legitimize the slow murder of Julian Assange. Solidarity, Julian.